Hello everybody, my name's Atley. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to SnowRunner, my hard mode playthrough. This is a special expedition. So the observant of you will notice that I am not in Canada. So this episode is out of sequence from my Canada series because it's a separate separate special mini series if you like I'm not entirely sure I'll get this done in one episode today which is why I'm saying maybe mini series but I have come to the Don region and it won't be any surprise to anybody that is up to date with the Yukon series but I'm here to claim my free Tatra Force heavy truck it's a truck I want to use in Yukon. Uh, it's a truck I could do without. I, d I don't need it. It's not It's not an urgent necessity. But it's a truck that I want. And it's a game. So if I want it, why wouldn't I go and get it? Uh, it's actually already unlocked. So this isn't an unlock episode. It's a DLC truck. You can claim it out of the garage and buy it. But you can also come to this map and get one for free. And that is what we are doing. So we're in the Tatarin. We're in the Don region. And we're about to leave factory grounds and move into the nature reserve. Antonovsky nature reserve. Am I saying that properly? Antonovsky. That sounds about right to me. Nature Reserve, Don, Russian Federation. So anybody who's familiar with this truck recovery and this region will wonder why the hell I'm in a Tatarin. So the unlock requirements to get this vehicle are I need to do two contracts one of which is Don's right hand and requires concrete blocks and cement to be delivered to a location in factory grounds. And then there's so two concrete blocks, three pallets of cement. And then there's a follow on contract which requires some metal beams to be moved around. And then there's a final task to find fix, refuel the force. Now, you might be wondering, why is he in a tattering then if this is all about cargo delivery? And it is all about cargo delivery. Except there's an extra special mission that is required after I've got a bit of fuel. The scout fuel trailer is all but empty, but I would rather have the fuel in me and maximize my chance of success because this is not the first time I've started recording the beginning of this episode and the extra special mission that we have to do is to recover from a fairly classic Atlay mistake. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we have a we have a self-imposed mission to come and do a rescue, and I will explain all of that in a minute when we get around to the corner to where the rescue is required. Now, obviously, we all know that the Tatarin is not the best wader, so maybe I shouldn't be in this puddle. Trying to skirt around the edge. I just wanted to get through the shallow bit and get to the point I can skirt around the edge. But I came here in a truck. I started moving some cargo. And I got myself in trouble. And I need a rescue. And for my own entertainment reasons, really. I've chosen to do it this way around. So I've got to come and do a rescue. And I've, I've chosen to, to cut it and edit this way. 
I'm recording some footage. Uh, I hope it makes it entertaining. It's just an idea that I had while I was thinking about how to put this into this kind of mistake that I made into uh, uh, interesting content. And the mistake that I made is I was trying to do this on the cheap. And as I've said in my Yukon series, all of my useful trucks, all of my most useful trucks, are on Yukon. And I didn't really want to branch out and bring like the Tega or the Warangrad or any of my bigger, more useful trucks here for this rescue. So I had a bright idea that I would be able to do this on the cheap. And I brought a truck that is arguably a bit less capable than some of my other options. Although it's still a truck that I do enjoy driving. I do like the truck. I think it is capable. But I tried coming here with uh, sort of bench reserve team vehicle rather than a main team vehicle. And I didn't bring any support for it. And I've decided to fix that by coming here heavy handed. Because as you can see, I left the White Western Star in a right gnarly mess. And now I'm going to show you how we got there. I am going to try and use the White Western Star for this. And if I end up needing to bring another vehicle in from Yukon, then I will. But for now, I'm going to give this one a try. It's a decent truck. Uh, it's in Kola Peninsula at the minute, where I was doing some medium logging with it. It doesn't have all of the things I might want. So it, does, it only has a standard winch, and it doesn't have um, an off-road gearbox. But... I don't, I don't need to do a hell of a lot with it, so I'm just going to give it a try, and I'm hoping it'll work. Let's get on with it. Let's talking. I'm also using a controller, which I don't normally use. I normally mouse and keyboard, but I've been getting used to the controller, and I'm going to give this a try as well. What time of day is it? Just approaching midnight, so about the worst time of day for us. But we are going to basically come out, head down into nature reserve this is a pretty sticky bit of road to get across i don't know how the white western star is going to cope with that um because obviously it doesn't have mud tires we can go straight into nature reserve try and find the fuel get the trailer get the cement come back that's the first phase of getting this done I really like the White Western Star, and I'm I'm hopeful that it'll do okay at this job. I, th I haven't used it a lot lately, basically because it's a good truck, but it doesn't do the Holy Trinity, and I have kind of feel like I've got better trucks, so therefore this has gone by the wayside a bit. But using it in Michigan, I really enjoyed it. It's got UOD2 tyres on it, so, so not the chains that we were using in Lake Coft. I'll put the UODs back on it. Uh, oh, drive... Stick the dip lock on. I might stick the HUD back on so that I remember the controls a bit better. This is not a nice piece of terrain. Uh, most trucks that I've come across here with struggle a little bit. And there's a few options I've got for bringing in some help if I need it. One of them could be, could be the Tatarin, really. Because it, although it's in Yukon, I don't have a pressing need for it at the moment. I've, in Yukon, I've got the Ford. I could bring the Ford. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that I'm finished with it, though. And I could, in theory, I reckon, do nearly all of it with, or pretty much all of it, with the White Western Star if it goes well. White Western Star, it, the fuel tank was full when I left the garage, pretty much. So it should be okay to get in and find fuel on the factory map. I can't exactly remember where I left the fuel, that's the only thing. I don't remember whether I moved the scout trailer down towards where the Phoenix was, because the Phoenix needed fuel to be recovered as well. So a little bit of a, 
I don't remember what I did and I haven't watched my own video to go back and, and sort of see how I left the state of this map. I haven't been back here obviously since I got the Phoenix. But let's see. Quite nervous about this really to be honest. Lights on. And break on. I will leave it pretty much in all-wheel drive for this phase. Now there's a fuel trailer, I think, here that I haven't moved. Or I, I hope I haven't moved. I don't remember how much fuel was in it. I don't really want to tip any trucks over as well. I, I tipped the truck over here last time I was in this area. So there should be a scout fuel trailer about... Yeah, there it is. So it's still... So the trailer's still here. Let's see how much fuel I left in it. Oh, it's empty. It looks nice. A hundred liters, lot. So it'll 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 let me fill my tank back up, but it's only got sixty liters left now. There is another scout fuel trailer over here, which is not on. That's eighty nine percent full, so that'll do all right. That's not far from. This is the sideboard trailer that I'm going to get, and here, no, it's not. Here is where I can get three pallets of cement. So I'm basically going to come down, uh, I think last time I used the wrong road. Tell you what, I know I can, I know I can cross this area. So I'm going to come across here and then up to rejoin that road. Come here, shoot down there, grab that fuel, come back, get the trailer, get some cargo, get back out. See how we do. If anything, I'll be more confident with the trailer on because the trailers act as a bit of a stabilization, whereas this feels quite tippy. And unless that's just me reacting to the fact that if I did tip it, I'm on my own basically. So I'm coming this way to get that scout fuel trailer and I think I'm going to pull that with me at least a lot of the way so that I've got fuel I know I need fuel to rescue the horse. Right, so what I'm going to do there, I'm just going to drag this trailer from here and try and turn it. Bit of daylight coming in, very welcome. And then my big blue trailer should be just around the corner here. Didn't necessarily mean to do that, but it won't hurt. I'll achieve the same outcome, which is that when I get past the trailer, I'll hook, hook to the front of it and drag it with me. I might put it in the blue trailer, because there should be room to put it in and still get free cement in there. I know I've got to get blocks, but I just want the trailer on the other map, I think, because it's mostly full. Not the easiest thing to put in a trailer for me, but I'll manage. Right, so engine off. Before I attach this trailer, let's make sure I know where I've got to take it. So uh, I basically want to turn it. I want to go through here. And then I can use this route down to load up three cement. So really, I want to take this, I want to go past the trailer so I can turn it in the right direction and take the fuel trailer enough with me. All right, drop a trailer, pull myself forward a bit if I can. Winch off that. Sat in a little bit of a muddy swamp, but I don't like, but...
conveniently I'm pushing a trailer in the direction I want it to go as well so that's all right I'm going to call that a plan and say I did that on purpose I can't attach to it on its roof can I Egypt Stay there, please. I'll have to back the blue trainer in a little bit. The blue trailer's stuck on roots now, is it? We're gonna play that game, are we? Yeah, the trailer's stuck on something. There we go. So backing it up can sometimes like, cause the root that it's stuck on to despawn. We're at that time. And we've got fuel with us. Am I going to come out through the same way? No, I think I'll be going out the other way. So I will continue to take this fuel with me. I was going to leave it here and collect it on the way back. Because this is a little bit of a nasty bit of terrain, I think, if I remember rightly. Just this puddle. I think I came through here on the Phoenix recovery and I just remember this puddle being a bit gnarly. I do feel safer with a trailer on. I feel a little bit less tippy. Not having the advanced winch is hurting a little bit. I probably should have swapped like an off-road gearbox and advanced winch off another truck and borrowed it for this effort. And we're here. Let's leave that trailer there and position the semi-trailer for loading that should do it so the question is running through my head at the minute as a special expedition this ends up being two or three hours do I care do I just get it done uh, tell you what well, it seems I've just ran into that Refuel. Fill me up. Yeah. So if this ends up being two or three hours effort, should I just leave it as a two or three hour video special expedition? Or should I try to make the video length match my normal episodes and therefore cement onto the loading platform and therefore do several episodes because I can already tell that this is not getting done in one episode I think we'll see I'll right, put these on the tail because I'd like to try and get the scout fuel carrier in the front of the blue trader if I can because it would suck to run out of fuel and not be able to reach it because it's on the back of the trader so that should allow me to connect and hopefully have that pack on the back three slots and get this trailer in I'm not great at moving these trailers like this this will get messy but we'll see how we do I've tried doing this before and it's just been a complete mess kept swinging after I told it to stop get the wheels in that's the first step and then try to just pull the nose of the trailer around you would almost think I knew what I was doing back trucks and trailers so that's now got the fuel trailer chocked in and I can refuel from it without any trouble. And I'm going to take that back. It does mean that when I eventually come back to Don, I'm going to have a fuel challenge on this map because I've taken the fuel back to factory rounds. But I'm going to turn the engine off a sec and plot my route. I don't think that bridge is going to be passable for me. 
And I probably should just fix that bridge, because I imagine that maybe this uh, is a crafting zone, wooden planks. Yeah, so maybe not. So I'm going to retrace the route I came in and assume that that bridge is not passable. If I get to this point and decide the bridge is passable even though it's not repaired, then I might go the other way. But at the moment, I'm going to stick to the route that I used on the way in because I know it worked-ish. So onwards. So you got fairly heavy cargo on now between the three pallets of cement which are heavy in their own right. And then I assume a packed fuel trailer also represents quite a quite a mass on the trailer. So that's a mixed blessing. The weight of the trailer should make us a bit more stable, but it also is more uh, traction needed for the truck to pull. But the good thing is that the winch is free. I'm not I'm not towing the, the fuel trailer on a winch. Oh, my crane legs are still down. Look. Are they? No. Crane legs are poking down, but I guess that's just what they do. Fine. Some of them fold up out of the way, don't they? I'll just and not use this variety of crane for a little while, I suppose. There to a side. Try and get a bit of lateral movement, I think. I'm not entirely sure what I'm stuck on. Weak source winch isn't helping. Bit of help from the tree to get the tail of the trailer moving. I definitely haven't made my life easier, have I? Taker will probably be back in factory grounds by now. Not quite reach. I like that big tree. Gives me a sense of safety. Yippee! <laughs> My favourite. That big tree rescued me, but I should have put the line on before I actually tipped over. Right, this is going to get a little bit messy. The good news is it is recoverable. The bad news would be if I tipped it more. Legs down. I don't want it to attach to that. I want it to attach. Maybe I'll have to pull this trailer out of the way. I'll probably end up putting the cement on the front of the truck just because it's, it's the only way I'm going to be able to reach. I don't like the angle I'm at. But let's... What's going on? Yeah, my engine's my engine's broke. I've drowned. I've drowned my truck. I've drowned my truck because I couldn't I couldn't control it because <laughs> the controller wasn't letting me get where I wanted to be. So my engine was running, but I had it underwater. So that's now a proper problem, right? <sighs> Special expedition. What a good idea. Why don't you do one of those, Atley? I said to myself. So, yeah, that happened. And now I've got to get this thing back on its wheels, reload its cargo, get it delivered. And the, the Tatarin is going to stay here and support the White Western Star to get the job done. And the White Western Star fell over entirely my fault, as you've seen, but it didn't have any support. And now it's got pretty much one of the best support vehicles in the game. In order to be ready for this, and before recording the start of this episode, which hopefully did cut into something that's quite entertaining, I hope, um, I fully refueled and resupplied. I drove over to the resupply depot in factory grounds 
with the tatter in. Uh, I want to attach my winch. It's not letting me control my mouse. I think it's sticky keys. There we go. So I'm going to try and pull this back onto its wheels a bit. Try and get it enough that it can stay on its wheels. If possible. My engine off. Jump into Western Star. Restore the crane. Jump back. And you'll have to bear with me because I'm trying to get this done as quickly as I can. Because I want to make some decent progress on these contracts. So I'm going to pull the White Western Star out of the water. Move its trailer. And then use the White Western Star to load the trailer. Without trying to do the whole thing semi-inverted in a puddle with very low hanging um, snorkel trying to lift pallets of cement which I know already knew were quite heavy so yeah let's get it moved and, and I need to make it safe so that I can spend my repair points fixing the engine because that's my biggest problem I broke my engine, basically. If I hadn't broke my engine, I might have been able to get out of this. Uh, let me turn off my engine. And then I'm going to... I thought I'd turn my engine off on sec. I'll turn my lights. This is me getting used to the controller, people. Uh, which was a contributing factor in the White Western Star falling over in the first place. But... So, roof rack, 150 points. Into the White Western Star. Uh... I'm going to go engine to start with because that's my biggest problem. So all of these points will be swallowed into that engine. That's my roof rack now empty of repair points. But there is a re resupply zone on this map. And then I'm going to park this here. And use the White Western Star to try and get its cargo back on. I'm going to try and make the trailer safe before I do that. Because that's been the, one of the problems, is getting the trailer safe. So if I leave the trailer there, and I can load the trailer there, that should be safe for me to reconnect. Attach the trailer. And then I've got to manoeuvre myself so that I can safely reach the cargo. I don't really need the fuel trailer anymore. The Scout fuel trailer, which in the piece of footage that you've seen I was trying to carry the scout fuel trailer with me because I didn't bring any fuel this time I did bring some fuel with me so when we get back to the garage area you will see that I have also in addition to the tattering I've also brought the crocodile tuz and, and the reason for that is that I knew fuel, the tattering was going to be an issue and I didn't want it to be an issue. Oh, no, 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 don't. I've done it again, look. There's something, that terrain's horrible, isn't it? I know it's my fault, but... Right, okay. At least the engine's not running, so it's not drowning me, because that would be a disaster. <laughs> Getting this cargo out of here with this truck is going to be a nightmare. Turn it round. That puddle is pretty nasty. Uh, is it that? I think so.
try again. But be more correct, cautious of the state of that puddle. I'm not putting my wheels in that water at all. So I need to get myself roughly positioned near that trailer. But I'm going to do it on dry land. I'm not putting myself in that puddle. It's a lot deeper than it looks. That's a titanium tree. break on let's try can I reach them from here that's the question Ray mode legs down so I think I'll be able to reach them not going to worry about this trailer I might even just leave it here because when I eventually come back to the Don region in the proper sequence of things that trailer will end up being useful to me let's focus on getting the cement back in cement's really heavy how useless would this cement be, right? I've just left it for a week, inverted in a puddle. These pallets of cement, they would not be useful whatsoever. These controls are spinning me out a little bit. It makes me nervous that I can't see the truck. So I can't see if it's leaning over. And then one more pallet, please. So I, I'm slightly tempted to just do this episode and regardless of how long it takes just get the job done rather than worrying about it being less than an hour and cutting it to be because it's a special expedition and i also missed my friday schedule for publishing a video this week so this is going to go live on saturday there was no video at all on friday so if i end up doing a two-hour video on saturday I hope you'll forgive me. Uh, the algorithm won't like it, but sod the algorithm. If my viewers forgive me, I don't care about the algorithm. That is that done. Restore the crane. Uh, refuel myself while I'm here, I might as well. And then I'm going to try and connect that up without falling in the water again. trying not to knock a trailer over but these trees are making my maneuvering a bit tight don't knock that trailer over please don't knock that trailer over i have knocked that trailer over and one of my pallets has fallen out look oh my days right let's get this trailer on and attached. Please. And then it's going to have to be, once again, crane mode. Not too bad. So I didn't drop them all, but that's, I'll, I'll be relieved when I got this on unpacked. 
So yeah, this might be this might be at least a two-hour episode. I'll, I'll see how much of it I can time lapse without it ruining the concept of what's happened. But yeah, so store the crane, pack the cargo. We are now loaded with our three cements. One of the bits you missed in terms of me explaining why I was doing this is I haven't got the concrete blocks yet. I need concrete blocks and cement, but I didn't have a trailer. So I thought, bright idea, I need three pallets of cement. So I couldn't do that on a two slot sideboard bed. So then why don't I come in here with a low saddle equipped and a crane, grab the blue trailer that I knew to be on this map as already mine ready to recover and use and grab the three pallets of cement while i was getting the trailer and then when i get back to factory grounds i'll have a five slot trailer i can go and get the concrete blocks which will fill up the five slot trailer with all five slots used and hand in don's right hand in one step and that to me seemed like a really good idea and i still think it's a reasonably good approach except that the white western star is maybe not the best truck for the job maybe Done that because I don't fancy trying to drive the White Western Star through that hole on a tow rope. That little tractor in the middle looks to me like a disaster waiting to happen. So I'm going to put it into diff lock right away and see if we can get through this safely. I think that would have been a difficult line to manage on a tow rope. I'm not out of it yet, am I? Because I've got my trailer stuck a little bit, but that was... I'm hoping now the truck is stable enough that the tattering can help me. Right, I'm going to drive as much as I can under my own steam. Which may not be much, but there's some, there's some slightly gnarly... Don't be doing damage like that, mate. There's some slightly gnarly terrain here to manage. because I haven't fixed that bridge. I'm trying to do the minimum amount of work necessary to get Don's right hand done. But arguably, if you were doing this, it would be more sensible to do some of the enabling stuff to make life easier on yourself. I am making life more difficult on myself, for sure. Can the tatter in brute force it? So I'm, I, I haven't got access to all of the roads because I haven't fixed all of the op, all of the routes, and I'm now trying to tow a trailer. I probably should have come across this line with the White Western Star. That probably would have been more achievable. That's been stuck on a titanium tree. No. It's not going to turn that corner. I'm going to have to back it out. It was the wrong line. I shouldn't have done that line. question is now, can I get it back? 
looks quite cool with the tail lights in reverse there. See if I can see if the tattering can pull it back so that I can adjust and use a different line. A good truck for this job would have been the Tatra Force. <laughs> Should have done this just now. Worried about dropping the trailer, really, though. Try and get myself into a better position. And desperately hoping that I don't tip this trailer over or drown this truck. Making a right mess of this, aren't I? This is the bad side for my snorkel. I'm hoping I wouldn't go deep enough to cause a problem. Should have fixed that bridge maybe. Maybe even drive down the side of it would have been better. Maybe that route would have worked. Now I'm going to have the problem of trying to get underneath this trailer again. Maybe the tattering can pull it back a bit. I hope this is entertaining because if it's not, I am making a complete mess of this. I think I'm going to have to change my approach somehow. I'm going to have to rely on the tattering getting the trailer out and I'll reattach to it in a, in a sensible location. I just can't get this truck in underneath that trailer from that side unless it's unless the crane can help me. Nope. I wish that light would stay on. It would make life a lot easier. I don't really know what it is that I want to do here. I know I need to drag a trailer back, but these trees are making it that I haven't got an obvious line. Maybe it's that. And I can't manoeuvre, so the tattering isn't very good at short distance turning circle. Like shunting like this. But maybe I get the right line. Maybe I can pull it enough to get past that first tree. And then once that's past that first tree, These trees are just, all, I'm in exactly the wrong place for a vehicle like the Tatarin to be able to manoeuvre anything and knock that tree over really. Not going to work, oh, is it? All I'll do there is roll the Tatarin. I'm getting frustrated, right? Did anybody tell? <laughs> That's no good, is it? It's not, it's not going to help. It's not going to help anybody. On Tatarin, you can do it. Just 
gets caught in those trees. I was going to do this in one episode, people. What am I playing? It's going to be a five hour episode the way I'm going. What gives up first, though? My patience? Keep my high side attached to that tree. Start my engine. Put my lights on. Release my handbrake. And get off the damn tree. Right. This is a shocker. This is a shocker. I'm just in it. This particular piece of terrain with the location of all of these trees is exactly, exactly placed to be a pain in the arse. And I've just spilt the cement out, but I don't care. I've got the, once the trailer's out, I'll worry about the cement as I said. I'll have to obviously reload. Because I'm not going to give up. I'm way too stubborn. If this takes me six hours, this ought to be a stream, right? Something that's going to take this long ought to be a stream. I ought to just turn on the streaming and show you guys me trying to do this in real time. <laughs> this would be too painful even for a stream, wouldn't it? It just won't turn. That's a, that's one of the problems you do find with the tattering is that uh, with the eight wheels, every now and then it just decides this is the line I'm going on and there's nothing you can do about it, mate. Got to get it in a position that the Western Star would be able to attach it. And so far, I am not doing a good job of that. Uh, there'll be quite a few people watching this and thinking this dude needs to go and chill out get a beer relax a bit and there'll be other people thinking this dude has had too many beers what's he playing at I just want to try and get this thing where I can attach it Tattering just needs to be out the way, really, doesn't it? Now, that's how that, that's part of the problem. Change truck, tattering, back up, and get out. Get out of my way. Change, please attach. Right now, <laughs> uh, restore the crane. I've got to load the cargo, but let's get the crane moved. Let's get the truck moved. Well, without getting myself into a tippy situation. Legs down. Get this lot loaded. Again. Hey, good news. It's daylight. That's at least 40 minutes I've spent there. And I'm not even in the other map yet. I've still got to collect concrete blocks and then metal beams. This special expedition for this Tatra Force is being a complete nightmare.
So the crane, pack the cargo. Now, watch me fall over again. But this is the line I should. I'm gonna. I'm about to do what I think is the line that I should have taken in the first place, instead of trying to go through that rocky gap. I thought this line looked a bit dangerous, but in hindsight, I think this might be the line I should have taken. And I think I will put a safety line out to that tree. And maneuver myself. I probably want to be in a high so that I can get easier access to reverse gear. Move a little bit. And if I'd have done that, I could have saved myself about 30 minutes of struggling. Not that I'm out of it yet, but... Uh, make sure I've got the... A winch on the bit that I want it to be on. Which is... I want to get to one of those. I think I should be able to reach, but... No, 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 no. This is... <sighs> Is there anything to winch to on this side? I should be able to reach those trees in front of me. Tatter in before it gets too late this time. Before it actually tips. I need to calm down. I need to drive carefully. I think I've got it into my head that this is all going so wrong and therefore I'm allowing it to get me flustered and that's making it it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy now. I'm going to get the tatter in ahead with a line on the correct side. to keep this on its wheel. Oh, come on, you can attach. No, it can't. Why isn't it let it, why isn't it giving me any winch points? Right, let's try that one. I'm trying not to tip it over, not This is a mare today, isn't it? These trees are acting like they're... You can't winch to them, these roots. So I've just gone and got the tattering stuck on now. You can't winch to them, but they're made of titanium. they doing
This terrain is really gnarly. And I'm, it isn't just me. I know I'm making mistakes here. But this terrain is really gnarly. Get you on a slightly tighter winch and see if we can do something about getting you out. That's stuck on those trees now. Those trees, look at the damage it's doing. The trees that don't want to act like trees. That want to act as if they're titanium bars. My non-existent co-pilot in the front truck is helping a bit. I remember now when I came for the Phoenix there was a couple of bits of terrain here that felt like you were just stuck in the mud and locked. So some of this is terrain. I thought it was down to my when I was here before I was asking I was wondering whether my graphics glitch with terrain that I've had for a while is somehow affecting the physics of the terrain. And I don't think it is. I think it's just that I think there is genuinely some terrain here that's broken. So when I come to this area properly, fixing that road is going to become a really high priority. Because that white western star should be moving. There's no way that is that stuck. It's just caught on something in the ground. I feel a bit hard done by now. I've gone from being uh, a bit mad at myself to being a bit mad at the game because that physics is broken. And the trouble is with it, this isn't the type of trailer to mess about with. So I've got to move myself, so it's obviously my trailer that's stuck, caught on something. But, but I'm just a really high risk of rolling the trailer over, Try if I try to pull it out with a winch. But I don't see a point, uh, I don't see a choice. Oh, 
I'm going to be bringing a bigger truck in a minute. Can't lift it. I've got the strength to lift it. Right, let's see if the Tatarin can shift it. I doubt it though. Get me out of here. I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Something like that, isn't it? Right, you mate can stay there. Let's see if the Tatarin can shift that trailer, but I doubt it. I'm about done move messing around with this. I might be bringing the Azov in with a big crane on it. Not entirely sure why I didn't bring the Azov in the first place with its low saddle. And I'm going to blame all of that on glitched terrain. Just really, really badly coded terrain. That is a dev problem, not a driver problem. I'll admit my own mistakes, but that is definitely badly coded terrain. I don't know what they've done here. It's, it's like they've said, right, okay, let's put down some mud. Let's layer a few rocks on it and put some water in because that's always fun and that's what the game is and there's no problem with that whatsoever but then just for fun why don't we put some 20 foot deep holes in the middle of the mud and some bits of tree that don't behave like bits of tree and let's put some stuff in here that doesn't follow the physics rules i reckon i literally and i'm, I'm not uh, yeah i'm salty right i'm salty but the developers have to have put some stuff in here that's specially coded physics intentionally to not work they have to have there's no way that the stuff in this bit of this map is following the game's physics rules i don't believe it for a minute I've got very low hopes that any of this stuff is going to work. Let me just get underneath the trailer, please. Please just let me get under the trailer. No, I can't. I'm not going to get under it. Just not. I've been trying to avoid dropping the cement again, but I've given up on that. I'm a, I'm kind of at the point of, do I delete the cement and start again? <laughs> but I can't do that. Too stubborn. So the cement's going to fall out. I can't stop it. Back to where we were 10 minutes ago. This tattering isn't designed for wading. I'm actually surprised I'm getting away with that sort of as much as I am, but just just forget the cement. Just get the trailer out of out this stupid bit of terrain. Worry about the cement as a separate problem. You, sir, are coming with me. Or oh, bring a tatter in. Tatter in will make this easy to recover. This will be a piece of cake. Yay, 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 yay. Bad idea on top of bad ideas. Bad driving on top of bad driving. Get it more or less on the road. Try and turn it a bit.
Blimey. It's all happening today. Slight continuity error. And if you know you would be able to see that I haven't cheated this. I got a OBS crash. So today is not my day. There's a song by the streets. And one of the bands I really quite like. And there's a, there's a song by the streets along the lines. In fact, actually the whole album, The Grand Don't Come For Free, is themed on the idea that some days, mate, you're better off staying in bed and not doing anything. Why won't it let me winch now? No, it's not letting me winch lot. Turn the engine on. No, it's okay. A quick winch worked. That's not really what I wanted to do, but maybe it'll work. I'm now repeating the last few minutes of what I've already done because I had a crash and a rollback because the game hadn't saved. Try and get this thing back on its wheels now. I can't remember how I did it just now. I bet it isn't going to let me do it this way though. Because the physics of doing this is a bit weird. I'm on the other side of it. It kind of should roll, but it doesn't always. It sometimes rolls the wrong way, but there we go. That actually rolled the right way, but it's done it right on top of that rock. I rolled the White Western Star over on that rock that the trailer's currently stuck on. So that rock features in the bit that I've just lost in my rollback. But even, even OBS is against me today. just moving this it's going to roll over again i just need to move it away from that rock so that i have a hope in hell of getting the western star attached to it right don't move do not move. I've got a full roof rack fuel wise on the tattering, so I'm not overly worried about fuel right now. I am worried about how on earth I'm going to get this job done in less than a three hour episode, given how it's going so far. I should probably be worried about getting it done in less than an eight hour episode. Can I reach from here? It's not far off where I was when OBS crashed. Crane, legs. Get the first one. Oh, the crane. Is that the fourth time I've packed the cargo? Maybe. This isn't a wonderful bit of terrain I've got to go through now. None of this stuff is easy because it's just deep water everywhere. I 
Maybe I'll just deep water and really steep terrain. Maybe I'll need to try and hug the side. I absolutely, definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, made a mistake not bringing a more capable vehicle. I am sorry to say that White Western Star, but something that is able to hold this trailer in place in difficult terrain and not drown in a puddle would have made this significantly easier. Just messing a little bit with winch options just to give myself the most security possible. Because I'd rather not have too many more mishaps. Tattering has got fuel, so if I, I'm going to push push on as far as I can, and then the tattering can catch me up. But some of this stuff, if I try coming through on a tow rope, I'll end up just tipping the concrete out again. I know technically it's cement, but the amount of the amount of time it's spent in the water with me, it's actually three pallets of concrete. <laughs> to the farm this isn't a brilliant bit of terrain mind I don't really like this this either this is a big soggy sump more use of safety lines would have cut out quite a lot of the trouble I've had. That's my biggest thing that I've done wrong on this rescue attempt. Uh, I'm coming through the farm because it's the more direct route to the gateway. This fuel trailer is empty. So when I come back to Don I will have to turn up with a big old add-on full of fuel. Because I've used all the free fuel and uh, once you repair the garage, I think it's $6 a litre here. So I won't be buying fuel on this map. This is a funny farm. In that it's wet and it's muddy and it's ploughed up and it looks soggy. But actually, if you look at it, I'm bouncing over relatively dry, relatively firm ground there. I was a bit wary to start with, but like there I've just gone into the first bit of mud. And then I'm digging myself a hole. At this point, I am going to get the tatter in. By the map. Because I want the fuel anyway. And it can get me out of that mud.
Get it past that round bale. All those bales are movable. There we go. And then back her up. Distribute the roof fuel between the two trucks. Get to the gateway. I've got to go and get concrete blocks yet. Uh, and then if I was stubborn enough to keep going. Right, roof rack is now empty. If I was stubborn enough to keep going, there's also metal beams before I can actually claim my vehicle. Let's get them out together now. Back to factory guys. Finally, we're back on the first map. Oh my actual days. I'm going to have a go at bringing them in convoy. Very tight rope. Engine on. See if I can control it well enough to get here. Hoping it's not too tippy for the bits I've got left to do. And steer wide enough to not cause a problem for that semi trailer. Blast these out of the way with a horn. Okay, caught on a tree, trailer legs caught on a tree. Not taking any prisoners. I feel pretty bad about this episode. Uh, special expeditions are something that usually attracts quite a lot of interest and new viewers to the channel. Anybody new to the channel is going to think, what the hell is this idiot up to? I'm not watching him. And some people that aren't new to the channel might say, right, I've had enough of this and bail out. So I don't feel great about this episode in terms of my performance. But I am way too stubborn to not show it. I've always said I will show everything, warts and all. And there's more warts in this than most episodes. So it's going to be a bit weird for me. But I'm not going to hide it away. I think right here I should drop the line, turn the engine off, and go and get the tattering back at the garage so at least I know one of them can reach fuel. Although the fuel is mobile because it's in a crocodile, which you're about to see as I pull into here. 
you will see that I have parked the crocodile there. Uh, it was Brian in comments suggested using this, and he suggested it for Yukon. I really like it. It's a good idea. I bought the add-on for this mission, but I will make use of it beyond this mission. Refuel. So let's look at putting... A roof rack from the crocodile. Roof rack full. And then change truck. Crocodile. Refuel. Fuel tank into battering. And crocodile. So my fuel tank's nearly empty already, look. <laughs> but. Change truck, tattering. Move out the way, mate. Someone else is coming through for fuel. Hopefully, I can make it to here. In the White Western Star. Didn't give it a lot of fuel just now. Map. White Western Star. It's got 10% fuel. Not deliver it yet, but I st I'm st I've still got to go and get two concrete blocks. So, strange as it may seem, and this was always my plan, I'm now going to detach my trailer and go and get some fuel. And then my idea was, I can now put a sideboard bed on, go and get the concrete blocks, Bring them up. Uh, take some fuel out of the Crocs tank for a minute. In the garage. Put the sideboard bed on. Go and get the concrete blocks. Without having to worry about trailers. So Customise. Uh, I also took the opportunity of taking... The advanced medium winch off the crocodile temporarily. That is the best snorkel you can have, isn't it? Oh, look, there's a high snorkel I could have been using. I wouldn't have drowned if I'd have taken that. Or at least, at least one of the drownings wouldn't have happened if I'd have taken that. Yeah. I don't think I've got wading to do for the rest of it, so I'm not going to do that now. Sideboard bed. Install. With the crane. So now I can go and get two concrete blocks. How much... You know, I need repairs. I'm paying the two and a half thousand to repair it. Because my gearbox and engine are both too vulnerable. It's making this an expensive trip. question is going to be can I in the White Western Star go and get two concrete blocks without any trouble change croc refuel fill her up fuel tank's only got 66 litres in it mm -hmm. Evil will drive off when I don't need it. And then my route for the concrete blocks. I know I can get them down here somewhere. 
So I'm going to be coming back over the bridge. It's basically going to be in here. I know this route, although the map is not visible. Follow this around to a point about there. And then if this works, <laughs> if I manage to get back here, okay, should I just go and get a better truck? But no, if this works and I manage to get back, okay, without the Tatarine having to come and rescue me, my intention was to put the two concrete blocks in the blue trailer, go and outfit the low saddle again, and then go and do the delivery. That was the kind of half-baked plan. Random damage, don't mind that, can't it be helped in this game. It's not lovely terrain that I've got to go through, so I'm not entirely comfortable that this truck can do it. I initially thought I could go down the railway line to get there. I've scouted this a little bit in my campaign save, believe it or not. I just did it in better trucks, which is the point I'm making about choice of vehicle making such a difference. But yeah, the the railway line option you you can't navigate. Nearly soldier, nearly. Steady on there, boy. Nearly. Quick winch actually worked with the controller that time. In campaign mode, this is easy because you just get a trailer. You don't worry about it. You just and then when you when you have an issue, you just recover. But the the way this has gone today is making me really nervous about thinking of going off and doing a a Muir special expedition. Did I make a mistake there? Maybe coming in through the back of the railway depot is a good idea. Maybe I've just done a detour for no reason and misremembered what I'd scouted. That would be funny. There's a watchtower not far away. Oh, the watchtower's on the other side of the water. Okay, so there's a prototype exploration train. Oh, that's full of fuel. That's handy. I'm having that. So on the way past that railway station, on the way back. So I did I did come the right way. Ish. Because you can't get from the track side into this area very easily. Not in this vehicle, at least. But that exploration trailer... It's got 120 litres of fuel in it. So I'm having that on the way out. I think it's around this side. That's the route that I did last time in my scouting expedition. It's a long time since I scouted it because I basically scouted a lot of this stuff when I was getting ready to do the Tatra Phoenix. And that was ages ago, before or during Cola. Get through this. Coming back through this will be fun, a little bit heavier with concrete blocks on.
pull the crane, back the cargo, and retrace our steps. So it's exactly the same route out that we just used to come in. knock your sump out on the tree stump that you just used as a winching point. That would be silly. And then driving out in the dark. Lovely. What time is it? It's only a couple of hours till daylight. Let's just hope I don't get into any sticky situations. I'm not going to be looking forward to coming back to Don, to be quite honest in the proper sequence of my series. Don is after a mule though, I think. So by the time I come back to Don, I should have the Zix 605 at least. And maybe that'll make short work of some of the terrain that I've just been struggling with. And obviously I should have the Touch of Force. I hope I have the Touch of Force by then. bit enough to be able to go into water yet get a bit of speed on I'll tell you what i should have done i took the advanced winch off the crocodile i should have taken its off-road gearbox off as well would have made some of this easier or quicker at least Daylight, lovely. Just when I needed you. Very heavy cargo. This is struggling. Calculated risk, kept some momentum and hit those wooden logs quite hard. I could have either deleted my suspension or just done one point of damage. And luckily the game this time chose one point of damage as my punishment. Alright, let's get, this, get some fuel out of this. That's going to help me a lot. I still think I might run out of fuel, but let's just grab that anyway. Fuel. Fill me up, please. Not quite. Four litres off full. Good, though. And yeah, there's no way... That probably is from this side, maybe. Oh, God. Am I going to do a silly? So... From the other side, I thought, nah, I can't get up there. From this side, I wonder if I could get on the track. Kind of looks like. I'm just going to have a. I'm going to stick my nose in. See if I. Can I. Can I maneuver this? I'm here now. I could have come through here. There's a ramp here. There's something up with this. There's some reason why I chose not to do this when I was scouting it. I thought, no, that's a bad idea. And I can't remember it, so I'm probably driving into a bad idea. Let's see. Where is it? Is it this one? Yes, it is. So I'll turn left at this level crossing. Huh. I could have gone that way. It's quicker and easier. That's possibly just bad memory. There we go. What could possibly go wrong? Almost at our blue trailer.
Right, so I'm going to stick these two concrete blocks in the back of this trailer. Unpack my cargo. Activate my crane. Put my legs down. And then I thought what I would do... I don't know if this is a good idea or not. It doesn't have to go very far, this trailer. But I don't need a crane at the other end of it. I thought what I would do is put the White Western Star slightly out of the way. Should probably put it in the garage really, but engine off. And then in the garage. is the ANK Civilian. And this has been sat here since we did the Tatra Phoenix recovery. And it's got a little saddle on it. I can't remember if it's got any fuel. But it has got a little saddle. A bit beaten up and bent, but has it got any fuel? Oh, it's got a wheel missing. So, but I thought this would be a better option to deliver that trailer than the because it is a more powerful truck than the white western star and it doesn't need the crane but let's get it mended first uh, at least fix its wheel which is all i can fix for now and then i suppose i might as well Chuck fuel into it. it. Only takes a 200 litre tank. So my roof is full on the tattering and I've got about half a tank in the in the vehicle. Then I thought, what's what's my suspension mode at the moment? I'll leave it on high. Grab that trailer and see and see if this is a better option to tow this to its destination than the White Western Star. I don't know. Feels like it ought to be. I kind of find it a little bit tippy as a truck, which isn't a good sign, but then... I think the White Western Star has done its work for now. I do need its crane for the next mission. Attack trailer. Unpack, repack the cargo. And get going. And I don't think there's anything complicated about this delivery. I think there's a lightly gnarly bit of road to negotiate. It rocks in the road like this one, but more so. So I'm not saying it's going to be simple. And maybe going right over the middle of that rock wasn't the best idea. And if I tipped it, obviously I haven't got a crane. The crane, the White Western Star would have to come and do the crane work to, if I ended up tipping it. It is a good job that you can't, like, burst tyres on trailers and do damage to trailers the way that I treat them. The way we all treat them, probably, but... Yeah, the fact that you don't have to maintain and repair trailers is a blessing. If not necessarily very accurate or immersive feeling because I'd be bursting tyre trailers all the time the way I drag them around I always like this engine sound of these ANKs we go throaty roar on it it's really the it's a little bit tippy and it's only got a 200 litre fuel tank and that makes it hard to use in hard mode. Now, I don't like the look of those rocks because to me that's a tip hazard. 
So I am going to go to the left of this little tree. If I can do that gently. Let me put a line onto it, probably. And avoid... I don't know whether you get to a point that one of the contracts lets you clear that rock slide. I hope so. That down power pole and rock slide is a real nuisance. Bit of assistance turning the corner, hopefully. Get to just get myself to the side of that power pole. And then the other thing that I know about this map is that it's got all of these broken slabs in the ground. And again, I don't know if you get to fix this ever. Bit of a almost a, almost a jackknife situation there. But these are pretty bad for deleting your suspension. And I'm pretty sure by the time I come to Don normally, from watching other people's gameplay, that a Muir will have taught me that the devs have decided at some point in the life cycle of this game, they decided to put those blocks in there and position them in a way that deletes your suspension if you're not careful. So the answer there is to be careful, which is not my middle name. Right. Handbrake. Engine off. Cargo. Don's right hand. Concrete blocks. Deliver. One, two. Cement. Deliver. One, two, three. Cut scene. Enjoy. Now, I'm not going to lie, but I do not think I delivered enough materials to have that effect. <laughs> Trailer store is now available. 960 XP, eight and a half grand. So here's the challenge. What do I do? What that's done is it has unlocked. Hmm. Is it Riverport? Yeah. It's unlocked Riverport. And I've not scouted this. But what I have to do is... Uh, let's get rid of that waypoint a sec. I have to pick up two... I have to find two lots of metal beams. I know there's one lot here somewhere. Which is pretty much where that's our touch of force right there. You can see the shadow of it. Um, so I know there are metal beams down here somewhere. I don't know how easy they're going to be to reach. So for now, I'm going to leave the ANK where it is. I'm going to see if the White Western Star with its two slot cargo. Should I take the blue trainer? get these I don't feel like it I feel like the white western star should go and make a brave effort but I'm going to steal even more fuel out of the tattering to give the white western star a full fuel tank before it leaves but it does mean I'll have to do two trips. So a trailer, a two slot trailer would be really nice. But I don't fancy dragging that blue trailer around again. Refuel. Roof rack. So get the Tatarin for now. Tatarin's still got a third of a tank. 
I don't know. I don't know, guys. Should I take the blue trainer? I don't feel like I should. I feel like I'd be better off, if anything, just take the white western star. Uh, my biggest concern is fuel now. In terms of finishing this. And time, obviously. I'm way over the time of recording that I would ever consider doing for an episode. In fact, let's be sensible. Uh, been a bit of a nightmare. I'm not going to lie. It has been a bit of a nightmare. And I, as much as I want to get this done in one episode, I just can't. It's going it, to, it would mean I'd miss my Saturday schedule as well. So I am going to leave this episode here. And see if I can edit it down into something watchable. Because I just, I, I don't know how long this power poles it will take. And then there's the rescue in the vehicle itself. So I could be talking about another two hours of gameplay. And I just won't be able to edit that into anything watchable. So ignore what I said earlier on about making this one episode no matter what. I'm going to wrap this episode here. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you managed to stick through it at the same time. If anybody skipped this earlier and thought I'm not watching that, I don't blame them. Um, no hard feelings. And I hope to see you in the main series uh, back to normal on Monday. And then I'll work out when to come back and finish this. Yeah, I think that's the best plan. So... Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you back in Yukon on Monday. Uh, in the meantime, thanks and goodbye.